start a series, and that series, I call it Intimacy with the Holy Spirit. It's an Intimacy series. So, but then the part one, I want to start by saying I want to introduce you to God. I call it Introduction to God. Introduction to God. Uh, so, I want to say, first and foremost, that there are three ways by which you can get to know God on the earth. Or there are three personalities or there are three channels through which God is revealed, basically, to us on the earth. Everybody have their own perception of who God is. Everybody have their own understanding of who God is. But I want to set certain understanding or record straight by teaching also that we can have an understanding and have the whole counsel of God. The whole counsel of God. Once we get the sand ready, they need to mix. It needs to give me scripture. So sand man will sit down here. The whole counsel of God. Very important. All right. So now, um, in the scripture, God is revealed as Elohim. Elohim is a plural word meant for three. A man that God is more than one personality. Let's just put it that way. One personality. And so we know that the Bible said he made him little lower than the angels. The word angels there in the book of Hebrew is Elohim. Elohim. And right from the beginning, I mean, to really understand what we are looking into, because God the Father is not known to us or cannot be known to us except through these three basic ways, God the Son, God the Spirit, and the living Word. Are you getting what I'm saying? And we'll look at that. There is no way you get to know God except through those three awesome personalities. All right? That God the Father is known in the testimony or is known by the express image of the Father revealed in the Son. All right? And then the same thing, nobody can really know God except by the Spirit of God. And what has been documented in his word by people who has worked with him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Those are the b basic, three basic, I mean, there is nothing else anybody wants to say that is outside the understanding of these three basic personalities. So, but then let's first establish this truth that God is Elohim. And somebody might ask, intimacy with God, what are we trying to, you know, come up with? What is the, what is the, idea behind it. You know, what I found out is that the more you know God, the easier it is for you to gain command and control of things on earth. Are you getting what I'm saying? Just the encounter that Elisha had when Elijah was taken made Elisha to be in control of the flowing of Jordan River. Are you getting what I'm saying here? So if you know God at a certain depth, it will answer for you in your life, in different areas. It will show. The depth you touch in God reflects in your life, both inwardly and outwardly. It determines the level of your command in God. Are you getting what I'm saying here? So there's no trouble you want to solve or problem you want to solve on the earth that the understanding of how to solve it is not in certain level of depth in God. 
That is the way it is. There is no problem on the earth that is a special problem. That doesn't have solution in God. But it takes a man who dives so deep into God to touch certain level of understanding or certain level of depth in God in order to bring solution to the surface for people who dwell on the surface. The other time I was sharing, I said that the mountain dwellers are more or less like people who dwell in the manifest presence of God. They hear him, they experience him, they encounter him, and there are people in the valley that are dry. The valley of the dry bones, all kinds of war, battles are there. And so God will not send somebody from that valley to save those who are in the valley. We bring people from mountain to come and rescue people in the valley. Are you getting what I'm saying? So what it means is that the people on mountain, the higher you climb, the more of God you experience, then that determines the kind of territory you command on the earth. The level of dominion. You know when it says be fruitful? You see, one of the things that we don't take note about God is this. He talks about the, he command, he gave us the blessings of an outward appearance or blessings that we show as proof that we know him. Be fruitful. That fruitfulness, it's a depth that commands that fruitfulness. When he says multiply what you have produced, that is the fruitfulness, is another depth that is deeper than that of the fruitfulness that will command the multiplication level. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the, the deeper you go in God, it determines. So when we talk about dominion, dominion is, is what Jesus Christ came to exemplify. And you could see the depth that Jesus Christ operated with God. He got to a point, he said, anything I see my father doing, that is what I speak. And as I speak the word, my father does the work. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it's a depth in God. So intimacy is actually a subject that is too, that is too paramount, that is too pivotal to our successful Christian living. And we can't go about intimacy. I mean, when you say intimacy with God, I, he, he, the Holy Spirit told me, he said, I mean, he just brought a picture to my mind that the husband and wife that now seems to know themselves in and out now, the journey started one day. They, 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 they were not born in the same place. Are you getting what I'm saying? They went to, probably went to different schools. But there was a day they met themselves. And they met casually, greeted, and they may not even know that something bigger than this, that we'll have children for ourselves, we'll live in the same house, do you understand? We'll raise kids together, we'll fulfill purpose together, we'll carry out things together. They may not, but it started one day. And the day it started, everybody can cast their mind. I mean, if you're married, you can think back. I mean, it can be so funny. My parents told me their own, they said, you see, your mother came with her sister. You know, she has an half-sister. And then they came together for probably an event. And then a friend, um, somebody who is like a cousin or something, or a relation of my dad, who invited them, just introduced my mom to my dad. That's how everything started. And then I said, I got your friend. That's, and before you know it like that. So everybody has that story. But for us as a believer, it's a story of you got born again. So everybody, that's why some people are, they are keen on, there is a day you got born again. And some people, they, they still insist that you must know the day you got born again. Because you know the day you were born, naturally. Are you getting what I'm saying? But there are people who don't know the day they were born, naturally. They say it's the third day of the market day. Or something like that. Just like we have in politics now. That some people, they are, they are ageless now. <laughs> you don't know, they don't know anything about their age. They just brought out one official age. Wikipedia is recording four different kinds of age. But you see, does it matter the day somebody was born? That the person is born, and that the day he was born, which one matters? That the person is what? Now that you are here, whether you know your birthday or not, it's not as important as the fact that you are now what? Here. 
Now, I want you to take note of something because there are so many things that people bother themselves about that is not as important. The scripture says we bear, the spirit himself bear witness with our spirit that we are what? Children of God. You can record a date and the spirit is not bearing witness with your spirit. You know you can have a date that I have decided and you cry that day and then the spirit is not even bearing witness with your spirit. What is the most important is that the spirit of God bears witness with your, and it doesn't bear false witness. It will tell you you are not born again. It will even bear witness because it won't be there. Praise God if you are not born again. So there are people who are seated here that I know and there are people who are watching online who can't really categorically say this is the day they got saved. Some people got saved like 10 times, 100 times. You know how many times you rededicated your life before you became so ashamed and you stopped rededicating your life? That God, anything that happens now, I just, I just, you know that they even stopped. They stopped rededicating their life because they are tired of rededicating their life. But they will still continue up to now because of certain things that are not perfect in their life. But I'm trying to tell you that the journey of a deeper relationship begins in a day. And that day, if you don't know it, God knows it, that day is when you were born again. When you became born again, you got into Christ. You get. So, and God does not expect you to be born a baby and not grow. Are you getting what I'm saying? Actually, our growth is as a result of our death in Christ. Our growth, our manifestation is directly proportional to the level of our death in Christ or to our death in Christ. So if somebody can dive deeper in God, such a person will command a level of certain results, certain understanding. And that is why I tell people that people say, uh, not how long, how well. There are certain spiritual exercises that places a demand on you to go a long journey with God. Do you get what I'm saying? You can't compare somebody who fasts five days of fruit with somebody who does 30 days of fruit. I'm not talking about 11 days of somebody who is breaking with, I'm not talking about that. Do you get what I'm saying? You cannot compare somebody who fasts five days of fruit or 10 days of fruit of, let's say, 11 days of fasting, and then by the third, fourth day, is already back in the flesh. It's not keeping up. It's not keeping abreast. You are not fighting for a, your spiritual survivor. There is something about, there is something about your entire life, your entirety in the realm of the spirit. You have to fight for it. You don't know that each day that passes by and you don't do certain spiritual exercise, you, you are setting, you are allowing a spiritual liturgy to set in into your system. And a, a major problem is on the way for anybody who lives like that. So, because the fall of a man, do you understand, is actually orchestrated not just by the devil, also by the complacency of that man. If you look at the mistakes you have made in time past, you know that you contributed the large tongue to it. You contributed so much, like 90%. The devil just brought 10. Are you getting what I'm saying? He was waiting for you to be well distracted, and then he can reconnect you to your old ways of doing things. That is why you can imagine how people are at home now. Ask you. Students don't know. If you don't continue to put keep abreast of what is going on. Thank God for informal information that is flowing everywhere. Informal learning, non-official. Do you understand that somebody is reading some news on Twitter and they get a link on Facebook and then from there on Instagram. You are reading whether you like it or not. You are just reading. And that is exercising your brain. Leave the brain and not read anything. For the next two years, you will see what will happen to your brain. The ones you know will start going, flying out. Have you ever spoken a word before and you are wondering whether it's correct? And these are things that you have done before. Are you getting what I'm saying? Have you ever thought about a vocabulary before and you don't know which ex exact context you should use it and you have to quickly Google it so that you can have a proper, a refreshing of your memory concerning what you just said? Are you getting what I'm saying? 
So what has happened? It's because you are not keeping abreast, are you getting what I'm saying, of the facts. The lawyers that win cases are the ones that read cases. They don't stop. That's why they say, Lene colleague. Are you getting what I'm saying? Uh, we have one uncle that went to build his daughter's house because he, he, did, he gave the penthouse for his daughter. And it's only books you see there. That's where she lives. And it's just nobody can disturb. There is no noise that can get there. The rest are general colleagues. Are you getting what I'm saying? Those ones can. <laughs> they can. <laughs> they, so, but it, because the man understands something, that this person needs to be separated, else you'll be losing cases. Are you getting what I'm saying? Believers lose cases in the realm of the spirit because we don't keep abreast of the spiritual facts which we know as truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because once you don't keep abreast of those spiritual facts, you'll be losing certain cases in the realm of the spirit. And you lose those kind of things, you lose on the earth. Are you getting what I'm saying? So somebody can become fruitful and instead of continuing to become multiplied, all right, then a complacency or spiritual liturgy set it and then something has happened. Somebody mentioned, sent me a message, he just built a call through. I said, I won't, I won't be charged from, from UK. He said, Pastor, I want you to just explain this snare of fowler, you know, snare of fowler. That, that what are the things that are like snares of fowler? What are the, how do we escape it and all that? You know, for instance, just casually, without even looking at scripture. And then I said, okay, give me some time. I wasn't even thinking about it. So when I was so busy. So when I gave my time, I gave him about six or seven things that, are, and I realized I should do a study on it. When I sent it as a voice notes to him, he told me, he said, Pastor, this is master class. Perfect. I get it. There are certain, see, we are not taking to cognizance. We are not taking certain spiritual things so seriously. And because of that, we are not making a tremendous advancement or progress we are supposed to make in our individual life simply because there are certain things that are not in place in the realm of the spirit. It takes an athlete who has really done certain physical exercises, you know, to be fit for the competition. Are you getting what Sometimes it takes them one month, it takes them two months, that's in Africa, <laughs> but you ask those, those Chinese that went, they just jump like this. They've been doing it since they were small. Are you getting what I'm saying? They know who is going to be winning the, um, the Kinecon Open, something. All this, um, they, they, they've been rehearsing it. Do you understand? They've been practicing, they've been exercising. You see small kids with balls, and they are just playing with balls. If you see the way they play with balls, you know that Messi is just, uh, um, is just for now. I mean, there are other greater ones that are coming up. Do you get what I'm saying? So, but we refuse to engage ourselves in spiritual exercises that can make us fit for that which God has spoken of us or for that which God has made available of us so that we can carry it out. So there's no much of manifestation of the sons of God because people are not that fit. And there is no fitness because we are not carrying out certain spiritual exercise. And people now think that if some things are taught and you can just pick some principles and you apply it and then it seems like things are working, you have understood it. You have not. Because until God takes you into that depth yourself that you now understand better what the man of God tried to share, are you getting what I'm saying? You don't have... You are not yet really established in the knowledge of that truth. So that's why Christianity is a personal work. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a personal work. How Abraham will tell you about God is different from how Enoch will tell you about God. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's based on experiential knowledge they have. When demon says, Paul, I know. Jesus, he first said, Jesus, I know. And then he said, later said, Paul, I know. Those both, the both knowledge, all right, generally speaking now, is a knowledge that is derived from experience. I've suffered in the hands of Jesus, so I know him. I've suffered in the hands of Paul, so I know him. Are you getting what I'm saying? But there's, it's still different because Jesus kind of knowing is different because the Bible says, I didn't know the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus was the one that put nail to their coffin. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
He slaughtered them, put nail there, and took the keys of hate and hell. Are you getting what I'm saying? Rendered them useless, defeated them. According to the message, he said they were dragged along the streets. Praise God. Hopefully and shamefully. Are you getting what I'm saying? But you see, Paul Wright wrote on that to exercise his authority in victory. Do you get what I'm saying? All right? So that Jesus can be in heaven and be smiling. Somebody gets what I did. And he's putting it to work. Do you get what I'm saying? So, but then it takes somebody who really takes his personal spiritual life so seriously and dive deeper. Not somebody who is dozing when we are praying because it's an online prayer. Let's learn to correct ourselves. This thing is very important. If a message does not correct you, it's not complete. A scripture, Bible says you've known the scriptures from a little age. And it's given for what? For correction, for a book, for... For instruction, for... In fact, instruction is the last one. He says before you can be corrected. Give us um, that, um, I think, is, um, is it three... Um, Timothy. Now, you have known the Holy Scriptures. Right from childhood. Is it Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. I want us to really have a better perspective as we dive into this world. This thing is very important. Now, when we see somebody who is diving deeper, because there are not too many people that dive into that realm, then God give them, makes them a gift to the body. Do you get what I'm saying? Whereas we are supposed to have people who dive to that realm and God makes them a gift to the world. Do you get what I'm saying? A gift to the world as businessmen, a gift, gift to the world as businessmen, gift to the world as professionals, as career people, who will solve problems using science. Do you get what I'm saying? Who will solve problems using um, analysis. Who is solve problem by, you know, because they make a lot of money and create products and services for people. Do you get what I'm saying? Because they dive deeper. Those people will be able to talk. They will come out and say that, look, this is our, we cannot, God is our secret. They will have, we have board meetings, we have this, we have that, but there is something about us. We don't make decisions until we have consulted God. And when we consult God, nobody can dive deeper into that realm. I mean, uh, people that do it, they will fast. 40 days because you want to make a major decision about their business. Because you have to operate at a realm where you will only hear sand. Nothing else can come closer. In fact, the analysis, the analysis in the boardroom might be against what you are hearing at that realm. But that's what is so solidly established in your heart that must be done. And that from childhood, you have known the holy scriptures. This is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. You have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation, truth, faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So you wonder why believers are foolish. So there is, knowing the holy scripture is at different levels. Next verse. And it says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So you know any scripture, you know inspiration of God. Do you get what I'm saying? So scripture can connect you to the breath of God. It connects you to the mind of God. It connects you to, do you get what I'm saying? You start reasoning at God's reasoning. As God reasoning. And say, and it's profitable for doctrine. So scripture will bring profit. So it's profitable for doctrine, and for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in what? Righteousness. So doctrine in righteousness, reproof in righteousness. Now look at it. So the scripture will make a standard for you that is different from Ten Commandments, different from the normal sin. Do you get what I'm saying? It will give you a personal life that is tailored towards fulfilling your destiny. That there are things that others can do, you can't. And you, only you will see it in the scripture. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are people who lose their wife, maybe while they are growing, they lose their wife, and then some people remarry. And some people can enter a debt and say, God says for you, don't remarry. And then for some people, he said, remarry within one year. But this is the kind you must now marry. It's different from, because the level you enter now is different. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a depth. Now that people are asking whether, it, is it the will of God, uh, to seek the will of God to choose future partner? It's a, it's, a, it's a story around hell. Are you getting what I'm saying? Story for the gods, like they say. It's, it's, it's not something you even start thinking about. You are so doubt. It's in a realm you should know. That it's now time for you to marry, sir. Not that you say, I've come of age. Uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, 
it's getting too late. I be how do they say? Say eh, I'm old now. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not baby girl. girl. I'm now. I'm now baby woman or something. I'm not getting young any longer. Uh -huh. They use those kind of statements. That is not your body structure should not inform you. It's now time for you to get married. Just like your body structure. See that, that's why opinion and the protocols that men have set should not inform you that it's now time for you to start your business. You can be 12 years old and God says go and register your company. The ways of God are different. There are kings that he chose when they were small. When they were big. Are you, do you remember that? That's you. So why would God do like that? Why would God do like that? Why would God expose a teenager to a Goliath war who had never been trained in, 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 in the Israel army? Are you getting what I'm saying? Why would God do it? Because he has, gotten, he has gone through certain spiritual exercises. God deliberately kept him away from distraction, from all kinds of social activity, to the extent that they forgot him even when the prophet showed up. And they didn't know the prophet showed up for him. Everybody lined up, but they were rejected. Praise God. Hallelujah. Haven't you heard about stories of people that were the frontliners, were the frontliners, and they are not the ones that God needs? So you don't, you don't, you, it's not a realm where you do competition. You can't be intimate with God and think that you are not unique. If you understand your uniqueness, you will know that you are not running anybody's race. Do you get what I'm saying? You're not running anybody's race. You see Toyota trying to compare it, it, itself with Ferrari. You will, your engine will boss. Do you get what I'm saying? That is the problem people have. And then you see Ferrari trying to, ah, I should have looked more beautiful like this. Do you get what I'm saying? Uh, you know, maybe Toyota has a kind of, you know, nice, shapey body or something. And then Ferrari just, you know, like, anyhow. And then he's uh, it's looking at the body. It's, it's not even considering the fact that he's carrying a special engine. Do you get what I'm saying? And it's, do you get what, I mean, you, there's a way you make comparison because you are far from the depth of Christ. You are far from the depth of Christ. I have to, see, I'm praying to God that God should, he's the one that commanded that we should teach this thing. I'm praying to God that God should drive home this thing so that people can understand that the first thing you are looking for as a breakthrough in God is no money. It's no money. There is something that once those things are in place, money will come. Money doesn't have a choice. It answers to certain things. What are those things? It is in the realm of God, the realm of depth that is commanded. The realm of depth. So God is Elohim. According to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 2, Genesis chapter 1, can you give us that Genesis chapter 1? So we know that it's God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Now, keep this scripture. Do you know that since you and I have been on the earth, there have never been any situation that is worse than this, or that is as worse as this? Has there been any situation that is as worse as this? Was there a solution to this situation? So why do you think? Now, now where is your own problem coming from? Where is the problem of Nigeria coming from? When somebody just says, I give up on this country. There are so many things that you can look at as metrics, as um, empirical stuff, statistics, that can make you give up on a nation. But that's if you have not touched the depth of God to actually see the army that God is raising for the same nation. Are you getting what I'm saying? Who will not, who may not jack back? Who may even jack back to come back? Do you get what I'm saying? There are things that God deliberately, if you check throughout the scripture, God deliberately sends some people into slavery, into captivity, so that they can learn one or two lessons. By the time they come back, they became stronger. Scripture is a jackpot scripture. Praise Christ. It's a jackpot Bible. <laughs> it's jackpot everywhere in the scripture. In fact, somebody will say Jesus jackpot said from heaven, came to the earth, and then died, <laughs> and then, you know, ascended back to the Father. Praise God. Uh, the truth is, if you have a special assignment in a place, even if you move away from that place, you'll be sent back. The earth was without form and void. 
This is not the situation of Nigeria. It's not as, as it's not even five one percent of this. Are you get what I'm saying? Void. And it says the, the spirit of the Lord, darkness was on the face of the deep, and the spirit of, the, of God was hovering over the face of the of the waters. Now we saw in the beginning God created as God the Father. All right, and then he says the spirit was hovering over the face of the deep of the waters. Now go to the next verse, verse three. Verse three says, then God said, let there be light. And there was what? Light. And God said. That said is God's word. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's God's word. So we know that there is trinity in this, in this particular three verses. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, so in order to know, you see, you can't be intimate with somebody you are not trying to know. There is a way you feel pure about people. These guys are pure. You know, you use it as, there is that purity mentality that this person can be trusted. Okay, so let's discuss further. It was intimacy that God saw. God saw Abraham to an extent. He has exhibited certain traits. And God said, will I hide what I want to do from my friend Abraham? Look at what God said. Knowing that he will teach his children, his children's children. So it's actually certain things you have demonstrated that make God to now say, let me, I can count on this guy. I can bring him closer. Do you understand? He said, if you draw closer to God, then he will draw near to you. Do you get what I'm saying? So we shouldn't see grace as, God, let, let me just remain where I am, and then you'll come to me. You, 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 the effort you are even making is by grace, right? You are throwing yourself into his hands, but you see, you are doing certain spiritual exercises that God himself can recognize or take note. That this must be a serious person. That's why Jesus Christ came. He didn't, he didn't go to the synagogue. He went to the marketplace where they are fishing, where they were doing task collectors. Those who were task collectors in the scripture, you know they were corrupt people. But they were doing it diligently, praise God. Just like God can take a hold of some politicians in this nation and they start preaching the gospel. Yes, because they were doing everything they were doing diligently. If you see politicians, they don't sleep. They are planning, they plan your future, they plan everything, how they are going to dupe you, how they are going to take your money from you, how they are going to tell you stories that will make you believe them to vote again, how they are going to keep you, you know, at that level. They plan, they don't sleep. They don't sleep. They fight on resources. From one meeting to the other. Then you see a believer attending the meeting and five hours is checking time. He says, and those ones, they are there. Ten hours. Fifteen hours. So we know that in this scripture, John chapter 1 verse 1 says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Look at verse, verse that means he's talking about Jesus now. Now look at verse 2. He said, he was in the beginning with God, verse 3, verse 3 to be precise. All things were made through him. That's the living Jesus. And without him, nothing was made that was what? Made. Glory to God. Good. It's so easy that anybody, right from the beginning of the scripture, when something is, is, is uh, if you want to know the, how some things are done, the first time it appears in the scripture, that's what you use to interpret it throughout the scripture. Do you understand? That's a standard way of interpreting the scripture. Anything God wants to do is through the spirit and the word. There is nothing else outside that. It's not true offering. It's not true, it's not true fasting. It's not true. Do you get what I'm saying? You are the one that is doing all that. If him want to do, it's not fasting. He, he, do you get he has gave, he gave one offering that saved the whole world. Do you get what I'm saying? So he's only going to respond to humanity only. To situations, to challenges only. That's a standard from the beginning of the scripture. All throughout the scripture, that's how God speaks. If he wants anything done, he will speak a word. Are you getting what I'm saying? If he wants anything done, it's by the Spirit. And when we are talking about intimacy with God, it's just interacting at a deeper level with the Word and the Spirit. It's as simple as that. There's nothing else outside that. And these things are so personal. I have a long way to go. So God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So God essentially 
all right, is one, but we know he exists as three persons. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20, to 20, to 20 he said, baptizing people in the, in the name of the Father, the, he said, all the authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me, but he says, you have to teach people and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because some people still have trouble with, they say it's not tripartite, it's a, it's a two-in-one God. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, the same thing. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's, that's this about a man being tripartite. There's a scripture I'm looking for. I think it's, it's, it's somewhere in the epistles, but if I remember, I will, I will put it through to you. This is for a man being tripartite, not God now. All the three are equal, eternal, and the same. Because if you are relating with the Holy Ghost, I want you to have this understanding. If you are relating with the Holy Ghost, listen know, you must have the consciousness that you are relating with God. Holy Ghost is God. Amen? Amen. God. Jesus is God. Amen? Amen? There are proof in the scripture. It's not just the Son of God. He is God. He came to die as the Son of God. He is God. He is God. All three are equal, eternal, and they are the same. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Let's quickly see Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. I want to read a lot of scripture. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3 to 6. Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Go. Go to Ephesians chapter 4 now, verse 3. You know, in Ephesians chapter 4, it talks about giving different gifts, you know, to men, you know, apostles and all that. But before then, it first introduced us to God before the gift of men. He said, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Yes, verse 4. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. But we're going somewhere. One Spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Yes. And he said, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Bible says in you all. Somebody say, in me. God is in me. Glory to God. Now, you see, you see, according to that scripture, we can see that there is one God. Deuteronomy 6, 4, one God. Ephesians 3, Ephesians 4, verse 3 to 6, one God. All right? One Lord, one Spirit. Now, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Now, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father... They are one and they are equal. Glory to God. Do you know they are equal? Good. So it's God that came to die to rescue human beings. Praise the Lord. First Peter chapter 1 verse 2 said, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. Did you see all of them in this verse? Good. John chapter 10, verse 30 says, I am the Father, we are one. That's Jesus Christ speaking. You remember John chapter 10? And now there are certain chapters that when they are mentioned, you should know what happens in that chapter. Praise God. I am the good shepherd. Do you remember? Uh -huh. That's the chapter of the good shepherd. Glory to God. John chapter 9, what happened? John chapter 11. John chapter 12. John chapter 8. John chapter 6. Praise God. Now, you, if you even want to have just knowledge of God, just knowledge, not experiential knowledge, which people have, those who are in Bible knowledge, those who read Bible knowledge or CRK or CRS or something they call it, do theology and all that, you will know some of these things. Because Pharisees were good in that. It's because Pharisees didn't have a spiritual knowledge. They just have the knowledge. Do you get what I'm saying? They had knowledge of some of those things. It's not spiritual knowledge. So he said, I am my father, we are, we are one. Go to John chapter 8, verse 58. I'm going to talk about Jesus a bit. John chapter 8, verse 58. He said, Jesus said to them, most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I, I am. You know that this is the name by which God revealed himself to Moses. Do you remember? John chapter 10, verse 38. John chapter 10, verse 38. See, I want you to understand something so that because this is an introduction. <laughs> but if I do, 
Though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may, you may know, and believe that the Father is in me, and I, I in the Father. Glory to God. Now, so Jesus, I mean, now I can show you that, that it's not only, you know, God is to be worshipped. Bible says God is spirit, all right? And uh, those who worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth, good. So God is to be worshipped, right? So I want to show you places where Jesus was worshipped. Do you remember Jesus was worshipped in the Bible? Yeah. Do, you know, do you remember Syrophoenician woman? Yeah. Worship Jesus. Who else worshipped Jesus? The woman that was using her hair. Yes. You said somebody dropped the mic or something. Especially, oh, okay, okay. I, I thought you said someone dropped. All right. Now, let's quickly check this. <laughs> let's quickly check this scripture. Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. Ch Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. Then we'll move to 28, verse 9. It said, and when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and men. Now, let's go to 28 verse 9. Right from the babyhood, Jesus Christ was being worshipped. 28 verse 9. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. This is post-resurrection. Do you remember? The first one when he was born. The second scripture when he resurrected. Do you get that? And so that it doesn't look like, you know, the resurrected Jesus is the one that was worshipped. You see, Jesus before death was not God. No. Jesus before death was God. 100%. Is that clear? Good. 100%. Glory to God. So now, when I ask you, who is God to you? What, when I say God is spirit, all right? And those who worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. Everybody agree with that, right? Yes. So what other things do you have in mind? If you're online, you can contribute. So who is God to you? As a form of introduction. I know some of you will start saying things that you cannot trace in the Bible. You say, God is my neighbor. God is my, God is my friend. God is my father. God is my father-in-law. God, he starts saying all kinds of things, and it won't sound like God is spirit. Have you? And so what other things does the Bible say? Let's say you have it as a knowledge, not an experiential knowledge. Do you get what I'm saying? So now what we are driving, what we are driving at is to use the revelation of the scripture in order to activate experiential knowledge. Do you get what I'm saying now? Yes, that it will not just be limited to just hearing the teaching. You carry it into your privacy as you exercise spiritual, you exercise yourself spiritually, then you can connect with the scripture that is taught and you can have experience based on that. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, if you go and join your courts today, and they tell you that drink this around 12 o'clock every Tuesday. I've not been there, but I'm just assuming based on, based on some things we used to see. Do you understand? And then they, do you know that naturally they will tell you that there are certain people that will visit you probably in the dream or some things will start happening and that you should start taking note of it. Do you get what I'm saying? So why is it that it's in God that people just become born again and everything is normal? And they're even thinking of going back to sleep who they used, with who they used to sleep with because nothing has happened. They are feeling the same. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? And I'm, not, I'm just trying to let you know because diabolical, the supernatural diabolical world is not the standard. God is actually the standard. But I'm just trying to let you know that you are not supposed to be having a normal experience. Do you get what I'm saying? if we are actually exercising ourselves spiritually. The problem is there is no exercise, so we are not fit. The problem is if there is no exercise, there is no experience. There is no encounter. Do you get what I'm saying? The Bible says Enoch walked with God and it was no more. He walked with God to a point. He was still around. People knew what was working. Do you get what I'm saying? 
I'm sure it was not the one that documented that I walked with God and I was no more. As you get what I'm saying? It was somebody that was moved by the Spirit to document his time. You know, Moses wrote about them. Enoch was seventh from creation. Seventh from Enoch was a man. Because if you hear that somebody walk with God and it's no more, you'll be thinking it's one spirit. You get it? Enoch was a man. The only difference is I walk with God. Do you get what I'm saying? Aha. Uh -huh. Enoch, in fact, Enoch is the father of Methuselah. I mean, if you don't know the chronology, you know Methuselah. The man that lived the longest. Uh, do you understand? Uh -huh. But he didn't walk with God. Praise God. <laughs> he had those that long years. But there was no record that he what he walked with God because all his story was just in one verse. <laughs> Hebrew wrote about Enoch. Do you remember? Yes. It was written about if I in the book of Jude, I think Jude or so, there was a place there that Enoch was also still referred to. He was not, not he wasn't just a normal person. He walked with God until God said, Guy, there is resonance. You know what's called resonance in physics? The frequency. Is now the same. The frequency at this level and the frequency at that level is now the same. So there is resonance. Are you getting what I'm saying? Resonance. When you walk with God and you start hearing the, the bell ringer of heaven, boing, boing, they are calling you. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? And it's, 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 it's actually a symbolic representation of, of rapture. Of rapture. I want to believe that. They said this trumpet will sound suddenly, right? Those who are walking with God will have heard the sound before the sound. Because what God wants to do is that you are walking with me and I'm, I'm come and you, you are not supposed to be anywhere. You are not supposed to be here again. Are you getting what I'm saying? By now, just as you take the next step like this, you are in another world. Have you seen that movie, movies like that? Especially local movies. That one say, eh, and then they are gone. They are working with the devil. Praise God. <laughs> and that's what, it, it's so painful. Because if you see somebody who is having a diabolical regalia, you get, you tend to want to fear or have some level of respect for that person because you that you are with original, you are not actually encountering anything based on that original. Are you getting what I'm saying? And that's where the trouble is. That's why everybody tends to be living normal. Whereas you're not supposed to live in normal because you're not supposed to be having normal experiences. Nobody will beg you to have a private, a privacy with God. That you pray. Sometimes we used to have different kind of occurrences that somebody will just get home and he's just praying and he can't stop. A spirit of intercession is just on a sister and it's just interceding and interceding and interceding on, until God opened the life of a person and shows her and intercedes and the person who has been struggling with a particular addiction is delivered by the intercession of that sister in her whole room. Because it's the community of the saints. If we can just have three, four, five people in communion who are working with God, I'm not tempted to ask you, are you working with God? <laughs> if we, I'm trusting God. Because if at a certain point, before Enoch will be no more, he will have actually gone and come back. This thing I'm telling you about intimacy, he will have tasted the place, accepted the place, gone and come back. The realm of the spirit, heaven. When someone says, I go to heaven, I come back, or something, something, God tells me to come and be praying in heaven. It sounds so strange to a lot of people because you are so carnal and so fleshy. You are just there waiting for a miracle, you know, to now start. To you, it will not make sense. All those common things that human beings can have, that anybody can have without Christ, is now the things that some people see as the main thing that they should have as they prove that they, are, they truly know God. Do you get what I'm saying? Among those things are materials, money, and what money can buy, cars, houses. You need to have certain experiences that will show that this guy is working with God. You can imagine God told them to stay in Jerusalem, and they prayed for like 10 days. Every head had fire. If somebody had left that place, took two days off, 
came back, said, you see, my work. Took the two days off and then came back. And by the time the fire will come, he might not, there might not be a location for his own head. Do you get what I'm saying? But all of them, it's like they have stayed in you know, like incubation. When end, you know, the you know about actory, when the, the fowl wants to hatch the eggs, what it does is to actually make sure that it is accumulated. Covers everything. If there is any egg that is outside that covering, by the time the rest are hatching. It will not hatch. Do you get what I'm saying? And it will be spoiled. Do you remember? Yeah. So that's, 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 that's what it means to actually take that level of supernatural incubation because there's something within you that must be produced. There's something within you that must be. That's why spiritual exercise is not something that is limited to church program. We're having retreat. We're having fasting. We're having, do you get what I'm saying? God can't, and it's not because you have trouble in your business that you should fast. No, because you just want to understand certain things more. In fact, I found out in the scripture that those who seek God's face, he introduced things that they were not prepared for to them. Do you understand? Mary did not plan to be mother of Jesus. Do you know that? Mary did not plan to be mother of Jesus. If Moses even planned to deliver Israel initially, probably was sensing it. And then he tried to kill somebody while he was trying to, and he ran away. He would have forgotten it. He was a fugitive. He ran away. He ran away from uh, an asylum, you know, from uh, Pharaoh. Praise God. But you see, God still found him and sent him. So it's difficult for a man to be genuinely raised by God. And that man is commanding certain level of results, whether in business, career, or whatever, without that particular man operating at a depth with God. And to operate at a depth with God, you have to know God. You have to know God. And that's why we are looking at some of these things. So, so who is God now? Let me start thinking of closing. I'm start thinking of closing. You know, thinking of closing is not closing. So who is God now? To you. Somebody say Abba Father. Game changer. God is a game changer. Name changer. Oh, okay, because he changed somebody's name in the scripture. That's, those are head knowledge, right? Because I don't think I changed your name before. Yes? The one that is able to preserve you blameless till his what? Appearing. So this is just taking God's word. All right? I'm believing it, right? Good. Any other person? Yes. God is love. You know the Bible says God is love. Yes. Just like it says God is spirit, right? Yes. Good. God is love. Yes. Yes? Any other person? Online. Okay. Tolu says shield and buckler. And <laughs> this looks like a cousin to David. My shield and buckler are my comforter, my help. My helper, my comforter. This is deep. Praise God. My shield and buckler. Now, you know to experience being, God being your shield, that means you'll have been exposed. And God protect you, right? Good. Buckler, uncle. He buckles your shoe for you. <laughs> what about my comforter? How many of you have grieved before? You have grieved before that you know that you know that there is a comfort from inside. That, that's experience. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's experience. But why are still people grieving over what has happened in the past? Where well, they have comfort inside them. Do you understand? Yes, sir. What they are going through now or what has happened in the past? Somebody did this to me. Do you understand? Like a woman was, was grieving and said that uh, she was told at the age of 52 that the mother wanted to abort her. And she is still pale because the mother, but you are here. The mother eventually didn't abort you. You are here. <laughs> hey? There are so many stupid things, foolish things that people, uh, sorry, sorry for, I, I mean, they might look like they are genuine things that should make you to be concerned and be emotional and be crying and be cringing. I'm sorry, but the truth is they don't have spiritual basis. They don't have spiritual, they are spiritual. <laughs> they don't have spiritual. He doesn't have spiritual local standing. Praise God. 
And you know the funniest thing? Why people talk to people like us? They say, we don't have emotions. I want you to look at the people that lead the world. You know that it seems like they don't have emotions. If you look at Putin, what comes to your mind? Even, even look at Trump or look at um, even Biden. Like, you know, the, the gas prices are so high up there and he's traveling to Saudi Arabia to go into, you know, there are people that are thinking like that. And they are talking. So when masses are talking like time, at times I just, these people are far from what is going on. So you know what God does with you? He adjusts your emotion. He makes you mature. Because where he's taking you to, you make certain decisions, not to harm men, because you are for him. And represent you will take certain decisions on even on yourself. That no, I cannot be, I cannot be I cannot continue to be emotional about this. Ah no, this guy has to go. My future is more precious than this. Are you getting what I'm saying? Be, this girl has to go. No, 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 no. No, 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 these people have to go. No, I don't have to belong to this place anymore. No, 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 this car, this is the end. Are you getting what I'm saying? You just take those kind of cogent decisions. You will know that those kind of decisions are not normal on a normal day. But it takes certain level of spirituality to come out and make that bold decision. There are certain things you will have seen. See, let me tell you, it's only a pastor that is not truly called by God. Well, if you are truly called and you dwell on the surface, that's when any member can hold you to ransom. It's so serious that let's even say you rob a member, you stole, you defraud a member, or you slept with a member and did abortion and all those things. Do you get what I'm saying? And it became a major scandal. There's a debt you go. See, there's a debt you go. God that calls you. You can even let God know that he's the calling that caused it. If David was not anointed as king, if he was in the farm, we would have seen uh, Uriah's... Uh, they, see, when he said, present your reason, he said, God, I am in this shit because of you. You have to take me out of this. How you do it, I don't know. That's why you know that he is the God that giving God. You see, he with, at that realm, he will be dining and whining with you like this. Why people are wailing with placards on the outside. He's whining and dining with you like this and resolving matter. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why when some people just look at their past and the past is trying to reoccur in the future or is dragging them, but you cut the rope. You get into the depth with God. Well, cut the rope of the past. I'll check with that. I face, you face your front. Look at your neighbor say face front. Ah, do you know what God, do you? Sometimes when you hear God in the scripture, you think God is not emotional. Moses, my servant, is dead. Joshua. Our, the reason why we raised Moses, because Moses died. That's why somebody, eh, eh, somebody said, eh, without us, God is not moving. What? He will climb on you. So when we said, when God spoke to us at the retreat, and army is rising, you have to start preparing and start teaching sense into people. What I mean sense there is spiritual sense. Spiritual sense. Everything that is yours belongs to God. You must get deeper with him. So who is God to you? Let me hear more. Because I'm going to continue from here on Sunday. Before you start doing family, family this, family that. Oluwa Tony, my personal coach. Oh, that's, this is like God, God is on the Forbes coach. Uh. <laughs> my personal coach. So now, it means that if God is your personal coach, then you must be a player. If you look at it like a football or a, a sport exercise. Do you get what I'm saying? So it means that God is telling you, okay, stay this wing, run now. Make sure, you know, it's giving you strategies at every, and this must be experiential. It means that when you lack strategy, you must go back to your coach. There is no one in the scripture that does not have this kind of experiential relationship with God that God used. It's not just going to be an head knowledge. It's something you must learn. And that is why when you have an issue, you go back to him. When you want to make major decisions, you go back to him. How you get what I'm saying? When you are not making any decision, you don't have an issue, you are worshipping him at a depth. You are just worshipping to know him more. Because at that level, he can even tell you new things to do. There are certain decisions, you are not the ones that will make it, it's the one that will introduce it. 
Do you get what I'm saying? There are some you have made before at a depth, it will undo them. It will tell you, go and undo this one. Go and stop this one. Go and sack this person. You know that guy that left? Call him back. So, who else? My shepherd. God is my what? Shepherd. Now, David knew this experientially. He said he will never want. Do you see that? And he tried to describe the work of a shepherd. The shepherd don't, doesn't give, give up on, on the sheep. He said, it makes me lie down in green pasture. Do you understand? Now, the word it makes me lie down in green pasture says, it, can, it could mean that I myself couldn't locate where the green pasture is. It was the one that took me there. He leads me beside the what? The still waters. Do you see now? Now, one day I, I was reading this place and I laughed. <laughs> now, some of us, it's pure water. We, do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> or bottle water. It's still water. You know what the Bible says? It says, be still and know that God, the still water. So what he's saying here is that I was not disturbed or movable. There is stillness in my spirit. Do you understand? Enough fountain that is made available for me so I can't feel dry, no drought, no, no, nothing to shake me. That's what I'm so, but then this can be traced to being a what? A shepherd. So have you ever found yourself in that trouble before that you remember that God is your shepherd and God has made things available? Do you get what I'm saying? Now these things are very important because we are not just going to be doing head knowledge again. It's not helping us. People forget what they try to cram. People forget what they try to just know. And people are now playing religion about these things. And so every service is a, a, a reoccurring the occurrence of what has happened before. And so, you know, it looks like nothing normal happens in the service. And it now looks like a service is special when everybody is on the floor. Whereas, what you take into your privacy that becomes your personal experience is the main thing. Do you get what I'm saying? Somebody can just, I can do like this, and people are on the floor. You can, you can, that is fantastic. God do certain transactions when that happens. But you see, the things that establish that transaction and complete that transaction. You know, have you ever transacted something and the money come back? Yeah. Reverse transaction. It happens in the lives of some people. After they fall in and then they are awake and they, 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 they stood up and then they refuse to now continue in that depth of spirituality. You know, it's a depth of spirituality that takes you off your feet. So it's an introduction to a new depth. So what you're supposed to do after that is to even start fasting. What you're supposed to do after that is to bombard yourself with scripture. Is to take certain time out and pray longer. Do you get what I'm saying? So that you'll be able to dive deeper and sustain what has happened in order to start digging deeper again. So, who else? Let me just take more. And then we'll close with that. I still have a lot. I have not even, I just have two pages, three pages, and then I'm still on one. So, Santos says, God is my senior partner. So it seems like he has other partners. But God is his senior partner. You know, that's how some of you make yourself CEO. Whereas there's nothing, there's no executive, but you are the chief executive. You say chief executive officer. There are no other officers. That there's no executive, but you say chief. I don't know who did like this, who did this thing to us in Africa. I don't know. Instead of you doing your card and just put it there, that operation, operation executive or operation officer. You are the chief executive, you are the gardener, you are the, you don't even have office. You are cleaner, you are HR, you are everything, you are, you, it's just only you. You are one man army. I say chief executive officer. Those who went to school are not educated. Sometimes we don't question what we do. We just copy. And that has affected people. You know people copy spiritual things now. He said they are doing one uh, uh, Christmas cantata. Can we do our own too and we call it cantoto or something? Or Easter cantata. Or they say they are doing the one, uh, uh, what's this thing that music people do? Like music festival or concert, yes. Say they are doing concert. I've never seen concert in my spirit. As much as I love concerts, you see, the concert that I like, they are classical concerts. Do you understand? That's why the fact that I like it. 
I have never been driven towards it. <laughs> See, let me when I say pattern. When I say pattern, pattern is not just something you reason out. You will know whether you are wired that way or not. Mm. There are certain people you relate with. Just relating first time, second time, you know that this person, no, no. And the other person is also a Christian. It's no. It's not. This is not my pattern. This is not my way. This is not my network. Do you get what I'm saying? This is what. That's why people go. It's those who remain on the surface, so that are eating from different families. They will chop word from redeem. Chop word from winners. Chop word from covenant. Chop word from. They are chopping word everywhere. Uh, they will combine Makoropo with uh, 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 Selman and then combine. You know, if it's, if it's a song that is sung for the body of Christ, it's different. But even those songs, you must sing it to just enhance your spirit. You don't copy verbatim and come and sing on an altar. And you are doing two fillers in our church for praise and worship. Or you are doing a, what is this woman in a, that snap pictures and do uh, uh, what do they call that thing? Um, spontaneous something. And say, you want my love? Yeah, where did I Oh, she want my love or something. I don't know the song, but and then you, you, you do you understand what I'm praying? You know, you see, let me tell you, that you are supposed to, there are certain things that when you hear them, and that's the problem too with the, some career chiefs and the business chief and political chiefs in this country. Let me just put it that way. They take what is going on in another country without adaptation and just impose it here. Without that, they consider no culture, they consider nothing, and it's affecting younger gener our generation now. When I say younger generation, I'm included, because I realize that since I've been exempting and excluding myself, <laughs> you have not been happy with me, but we are together in the whole thing, praise God. It's the same generation. This generation is my generation, so praise God. <laughs> you will see that a lot of Western stuff has come into this place, and people are now beginning to misbehave because it's not part of our arrangement. There are things we are supposed to learn and just, you know, screen, scrutinize, and adapt to our system. There are some of the, the things that are good, but the way we adapt them or the way we al apply them, rather, becomes an issue. Becomes an issue. And the truth is that people are not really deep in understanding. They are not really deep in understanding. Says, what else? What else about God? Yeah, Tolu is saying, God is my safe haven. Hmm? Have they been looking for a way to kill you? Which Tolu is this? Let's be defining this. All this Tolu, Tony, let's be defining it. God is my safe haven. Yes? God is my strength. So that means you could have probably experienced a certain level of weakness at a certain point, that you were tired and then became your strength. Yes? My everlasting light. My everlasting light. Oh, wow. To have everlasting light, that means you will have had everlasting darkness. But, <laughs> but thank God, now is your everlasting light. <laughs> Praise God. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> is a friend. This is very touching. Oh. <laughs> oh. Is a friend that sticks. Is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. All these things we are saying, you know, I have established. Is a very good point. I have established the fact that even if it's from ed knowledge, do you get what I'm saying? That's why all that you have been saying, you are in a safe haven. <laughs> <laughs> because if I ask you, how is he a friend that sticks closer than a brother? Some friends have shown you. It will never leave you or forsake you. It takes those who are very deep in God to be crazy about God. You know, sometimes I wonder whether, even if we can religiously believe God, we will be better than this. Look at the Islamic guys. They want to kill themselves. 
Some of them will carry bomb. Some Muslims don't believe. Some Muslims in the north don't believe the Muslims in the south. They are true Muslims. Don't even talk about you that you are Christian. Do you get what I'm saying? And they are willing to go to any length. They dress like it. You see their trust are jumping. These ones that some people are finding it difficult to use DP of our design. They are finding it difficult to, 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 I don't know whether there are still people like that. I mean, I, I've been addressing all those kind of things. They are finding it difficult to identify with Christ. Let me just put it that way. Openly identify with Christ. You know, it's becoming something that is old-fashioned to be openly identified with Christ now. That to say Jesus is Lord on your Twitter is difficult because you don't want to be known. Hmm. You need to meet guys that are into Judaism, the Jews. They don't joke with it. They appear like it. The Islamic guys, they appear like it. The Hindus, they appear. It's in Christianity. That even if you take it religiously, do you get what I'm saying? Have you ever seen some Christians that wear like polythene? Is it polythene or something? They wear branded. <laughs> you are the one that mentioned it. We are chosen generation. Praise God. <laughs> Royal priesthood. But do you know the funniest thing? What shocks me about that thing is not is the level of their conviction. Is the level of their conviction. You deliberately make, you deliberately, you are doing things that you know is against Christ. And that's what you want to be known for. You want to be known for being social. You want to be known for being a party person. That's what excites you. That's what you put out. It shows we are, you are far from this. And when I see things like that, I just pray for people that they can grow. You know there are things that freaks babies. You just look at them. You know when you see babies at times, when they had everything they see they want to put in their mouth, they are excited on what you are just looking at them. Oh, she doesn't know life. Do you get what I'm saying? You know, you can't get angry with them. It's just their level. But now we are teaching and we are praying that God should take us deeper. And may God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. We will continue on Sunday. Remind me to ask people who is God to you? And then from there, we'll move to who do you want him to be to you? Because we'll take assignment on that. We'll do spiritual exercise and use that to pray, to press into God, to see certain answers. Praise the Lord. Father,